Hi guys and welcome back to Birmingham Fan TV. It's Monday evening, uh, it's a little bit late actually, it's kind of 9, 10 o'clock. Uh, I thought I'd just have a sit down and a chat and a bit of a reflection again on what's been another uh, negative day for Blues if anything. And we seem to be getting a lot of these recently where negativity is swirling around the club and we're really kind of struggling to grasp any sort of hope uh, for next season. The anticipation should be kind of rising at this point in the season. Players are back for pre-season, the, the, the intensity stepping up, the fixtures are approaching for pre-season. And, you know, signings start to creep in. Uh, one or two tend to make an appearance right about now. Uh, Blues have had one so far through the door, Gary Gardner, who was already in as of last season, um, just making the loan move permanent. And we all know how threadbare the squad was as of, obviously, last season we had our own problems. We had big issues and the worry was if one got injured, if two got injured, um, we'd have to dip into the youth, which we knew wasn't going to be good enough. Uh, that squad that we had last season has been picked apart at the minute with no additions made. Um, this morning saw the departure, the inevitable departure of Shea Adams to Southampton for um, a reported £16 million fee, obviously with add-ons rising to probably around the £20 million mark with the, with the add-ons and, and whatnot in, in the deal. And overall, is it a bad deal? It's not an awful deal, uh, but it's not the deal that we'd obviously hoped for. We obviously value Shea through our Blues tinted goggles a little bit higher than, than 20 odd million. Um, some would say 30, some would say 25. I, I would have put him somewhere in the bracket of 25. Um, if we'd have got somewhere with 20 million up front and various add ons, I'd have been uh, you know, extremely happy. Um, but it is what it is, and it's a sad departure for Blues. 23 goals last season, and uh, I think it was six assists. Uh, and he was a big part of Blues last season. He, he was. Obviously, the focal point he was the, the 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 top guy really for for large majority of the season. The back end he tailed off, but I think that the the whole team tailed off towards the back end of the season. And yeah, it's it, it's a little bit worrying. I think that Blues fans are kind of looking at that deal and going right. We all knew it was going to happen. We all knew that there was going to be interest this summer. It was inevitable that he was probably going to go. There was a small um, hope that we might have clinged on to him. But they're looking at that one and saying, "Okay, he's gone. Do we reinvest? Where do we reinvest? Uh, you know, is that money going to be reinvested?" And I think that's the biggest issue for myself at the minute. Obviously, that's why I wanted to sit down and have a little bit of a chat um, before, obviously, the podcast goes out um, later this week. The money that we receive from Shay Adams will no doubt be the, the the talking point over the summer. You know, sixteen million pound fee. Um, obviously the potential st uh, sale of the stadium to go through, um, however much that you know may be, a couple of million pounds here and there. Um, I, from what I understand, a large portion of the, the money coming in to the club will be used to offset the FFP and, uh, and profit and sustainability um, to make sure that we don't fail last term's um, PNS. Which is really sad to see because you know even sixteen million pound could could give us a squad that can compete next season and we can reinvest in the right places, uh, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I don't think that we're going to be spending anywhere close to sixteen. We weren't going to spend anywhere close to that anyway. Uh, but what worries me is is just how much is, are we going to see of, of that reinvested and where are we reinvesting? Where are we scouting currently? Um, obviously. With the with the squad being as weak as it is, Hotty are already departing earlier on in the transfer market to to rivals Aston Villa with that swap deal with Gary Gardner. Um, somebody did ask me in the comments earlier um, where we'd heard uh, that we were getting between four and five million from him. It was um, said in part of the interview with Hotter, uh, and, and obviously I've heard from different people that it's anywhere between three and five million. It certainly wasn't one million in Gary Gardner, um, but I couldn't give you an exact figure. We're a winger down. With Hotter going, we are two wingers down with Mahoney, who obviously isn't coming back this season, rumoured to be going to Millwall. Uh, so that leaves you with a massive, massive void um, on those wide positions. Um, obviously, up front, we were a little bit short last season, as it was with Duke and, and Shea for most of the season, then Vass coming back. Um, 
that's just been made even even weaker with the departure of Shea. We're now down to two strikers. Yes, Jude Bellingham uh, is coming through and looks like he'll play some part next season. But can we really rely on a 16-year-old um, to really step up to the plate and fill those 23 goals um, that will be left by Shea? Obviously not. We need to reinvest. We need two strikers. We need two wingers. We really do. Um, and obviously, what, what possibly a sadder piece of news that was the departure of Michael Morrison um, after it was announced that we couldn't agree terms on a new deal. Um, so obviously he has left as of yesterday, I believe, when his contract did expire. And that that's really disappointing. Obviously, a, a club servant, a captain for the last God knows how many years, um, five years of service to be to be dropped like that um, is disappointing. Yes, I agree that the club stance on not wanting to give a player over the age of 30 odd um, a three or two year deal um, is understandable. But I think if you could have come to some sort of agreement, maybe on a two year deal for, for Michael Morrison and said, you know, no more after that, you know, you've got your two years. Then I don't think anybody's going to have moaned with that one. But to see him go in, in the manner that he has after he's given the club so much and with the... With the you know, if finances are going to be tight this season, you're not going to get much better than just renewing Michael Morrison's contract. He's not going to cost you a penny. It does worry me. Now, on the other hand, I don't know specifically what's going on behind the scenes. I don't know where, you know, I know that where we're looking. Uh, I know that the scouts in, in certain countries, I know they have been there for the past season. But I'm not entirely sure why... Uh, we are making so many wholesale changes to the squad that was already threadbare and so many changes in a short space of time. We've got five weeks until the season starts, five weeks to get a squad together, get a squad cohesive, get a squad that will obviously be fit to go and ready on the first game of the season at Brentford. We just don't have enough time in my eyes now. We, it's not, it's going to be, it's going to be chaos again. Um, rumours of a, a deal for a centre back um, that we are Birmingham um, reported this afternoon a Spanish centre back uh, heard a few names branded around last week obviously Moy Gomez was was mentioned last week as a, as a midfielder um, Blues lack a good solid six transfers now between now and the end of the season and that's at a minimum uh, now and the end of the window we lack two strikers two wingers one centre back one centre midfielder at a minimum People would say possibly a goalkeeper. People would say possibly um, another central midfielder slash fullback. Blues could add up to up to eight into this squad, and and it still wouldn't be an over um, overpopulated squad. It really is worrying, um, and it does it does worry me the lack of names and 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 rumours that are that are being branded around at the minute that doesn't exactly fill fans with confidence that the club is going to be uh, diving into the transfer market to really, obviously, almost fulfil the promises that were made in this statement that was made as of Gary Monk's departure, where the club are looking to move forward in the right directions and potentially push for promotion this season, which made absolutely no sense to make that kind of statement after obviously coming off the back of a, a season where we, we, we technically had to avoid relegation towards the end while obviously we weren't a relegation team for most of the season, it makes no sense to, to say, right, we're going to sack our manager for whatever reason that's gone now. Uh, we're going to get rid of half the squad and then make these wholesale changes and still expect a good, solid, stable, progressive season. Um, it's worrying times, if you ask me personally for Blues. It's not time to panic yet. I don't think we're quite at that stage. We'll give it another two weeks and see where we are at that point, see how many faces have come in. Because if there's no faces coming for me by the end of this week alone, um, it's really worrying times for Blues and it really would possibly signal that the under-23s are going to be a major, major part this season. But let me know down in the comments uh, below your thoughts, obviously, on Shay's departure. Obviously, we wish him all the best here uh, at Birmingham City Football Club and Birmingham Fan TV. We all wish him um, all the best for the future goals. He's been an absolute professional throughout his time at Birmingham City. He's been uh, a model pro. He's carried on his work, even with the rumours last summer uh, and last January as well. So I hope he does all the best. And, and obviously to Michael Morrison as well, who's departed the club um, after his many years of service. So where do Blues go now? Let me know your obviously next captain for Birmingham City. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Lukas Jukovic, Charlie Dean, David Davis? Just who do you give the captaincy to now um, in this sort of threadbare squad? Um, 
what are your hopes for the transfers now ahead? Where do we need to strengthen? Um, any names at all that that you believe that Blues could you know potentially go up, go looking after, go hunting? Um, and obviously now looking at where we are, which we're technically at the start of pre season. Um, what what are you, what are your hopes for the season? Mine at the minute to survive, you know, avoid relegation. I know that's a bit negative, and I don't want to come across. Um, negative at the start of the season but it's really not looking good for Blues and I can only hope and I couldn't give you anything confirmed at, at this point but I can only hope that, that these transfers do move a little bit quicker and, and names that are being being um, shunted around on social media do begin to make some progress because Blues need time to bed these players in they really do and we can't be leaving it to the last week of the season to get um, the last week of the transfer market sorry to get anything out of these because it's going to take them weeks to bed into the system and obviously let me know how you think Pep's going to get on I know that training's been very intense recently the philosophy has completely changed it's going to be completely possession based we're going to be playing quick attacking football I can evidently see that Uh, I know that's the case um, is it going to work? Let me know your thoughts, guys. But obviously, don't forget to catch the pod later this week. Leave your comments down below as well for the podcast and we'll get them answered. We've got many people on this week. Obviously, it's going to be quite a topical one. And there will be no podcast for the next two weeks after that one. I am in New York City. Um, so don't expect to see anything from us apart from some written stuff and some social media stuff. Go and follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, guys. But that is all from me. Um Trying to stay positive, but obviously it's going to be a a tough couple of weeks ahead for Blues. But uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, comment and like us uh, if you did enjoy this video. And we will see you later on the week for the podcast. Get it wrong, guys.